Is anyone there? Is that you, Bob? Bob? Please, I think I've killed my wife. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were in. Oh, just resting my eyes. Personal green stabbing. They picked him up in Camberwell. He coughed. Good. I looked in the map room on the way up. Two more crimes of violence, more GBH. Villains, carving up villains, nobody weeps. Have a lot. Well, there's this from Halder Street. Domestic killing. Some chap phoned in to say that he'd done in his missus. Halder Street. Wonder if Tug Wilson's still there. He was an inspector when I was aide to CID. I just put my hands round her throat. To kill her? Put my hands round her throat. And strangled her? But how can you die from that? I don't believe it. Mr. Archer. It's meant to be a joke. A joke? I just came up behind her in the dark, put my hands round her throat, and said... Yes? Sounds so silly, but... Gotcha, that's what I said. As you squeezed her throat? No, I didn't squeeze. Then what do you think killed her? Astonishment? Well, that's one way of putting it. What? Oh, Percy. Can I have a word? Was she strangled, Percy? Well, there's no medical evidence of it. No? Well, it ties up with what the husband says. Hmm? That he merely put his hands around her throat. Claims it was a sort of joke. Yes, well, it could be. You can see for yourself there's no bruising of the neck. In fact, none of the classic signs of criminal asphyxiation, cyanosis, venous congestion, protecchial hemorrhages and so on. In other words, no asphyxial changes so far. I doubt if the PM will show any except trivial ones. Well, what killed her then? Well, the pathologist will tell you, but if you want me to make a guess, I'd say vagal inhibition. Come again. It's a kind of shock. It can cause virtually instantaneous death. Shock? Yeah, he seems a bit shocked. I'll have a look at him. And you better call the family doctor. I am the family doctor. Oh, and the police surgeon. No wonder you're rich. Governor. Yes, Peters. When I first came in, I noticed some footprints by the window in the rose bed. And then I found some more by the living room window. And? Well, they look as if they might have been made by somebody standing out there looking in. Oh. Yeah, because it wasn't worth mentioning. Uh, everything's worth mentioning. Show me where they are. Hmm. I don't know what it signifies, if anything. But we'd better have some casts made. Get hold of a box or something to cover them. Nip upstairs and get a pair of Archer's shoes. Right, sir. Aqua vitae, the elixir of life. Very good for shock. Go on, knock it back, man. Doctor's orders. <coughs> Sorry. Not used to such big doses. Go on, have another. Get habituated. Um, all right now, thank you. Well, you don't mind if I do. I've had a few shocks today myself. Please, help yourself. Yeah, this broken vase. 
What's that? Looks as if it hit the wall. Yeah. Get onto the station. Tell the governor suspicious death. Very suspicious. I think he ought to have a look at it. Right. And get a team over here. Fingerprints, photos, forensic, and exhibits officer. Who's been chucking the crockery about? That's a good question. Is he all right now? Well, he's a lot better. Good. You uh, give him a sedative then? Yes, of course. Need one yourself, Percy. Good night. Mr. Archer, would you mind changing your shoes? Shoes? Uh, we need those for examination. Oh, yes, yes, all right. Nice place. Very nice. What? Oh, yes. The uh, electric clock in the cooker and this one, they're both slow over an hour. What? Oh, they, they must have stopped when the fuse went. I, I didn't notice for some time until I went to switch the lights on, in fact. Oh, when was this? I can't remember exactly, but when it began to get dark. But long before your wife came in? Oh, yes, yes. That, uh, Vase in the hall. When did it get broken? Uh, well, my wife must have bumped into the table. Must have? Well, you were there, don't you know? Oh, oh yes, of course. That's how it was. My, my wife bumped into the table and the vase fell on the floor. Sorry. It's also awful. It's not easy to remember clearly. No. Vagal inhibition. Is that what he said? Uh, yes, a form of shock. Shock. What, enough to kill someone? Evidently. You've never heard of it, then? No. No. Mr. Archer, I don't want to rush you, but if you're feeling up to it, I'd like you to come along to the station now and give me a signed statement. All right, I'll get my coat. Morning. Your pal from Helder Street, Milan. Yes, his gun has been under the ACC this morning. We're taking over the case. Suspicious death, Wilson said. Well, it could have been an accident, could have been murder. That's what we're going to find out. Get hold of the car, we'll go down and talk to him. Oh, there's no need. Uh, he had to go over to Vauxhall anyway to identify some stolen property. He's coming here. With Archer's statement and the rest of it. Oh. Are you holding Archer? No. They let him go as soon as they got the results of the post-mortem. Oh, Was it awful? It's pretty awful. They kept me at the station for hours last night. Oh, why? Asking questions, going over details, writing out a statement. Oh, poor darling. And on top of that, I had to spend the night in a hotel. Well, what on earth for? Well, they had men swarming all over the house. What sort of men? Oh, detectives, for fingerprint men, photographers, you know. But it was an accident. Yes. What well, if don't they believe you? Oh, of course, I think they do now, but, well, you know, they have to go through the motions. <sighs> Terrible thing isn't a way I wanted her dead. I used to look at her sometimes and think, I wish you were dead. Lots of people think like that about other people. Doesn't mean to say they want to kill them. Yes, but I did it. I didn't think her death would affect me. I didn't think I'd got any feelings left for her except one of slight distaste. Of course, I was wrong. If you live with someone for 15 years, even if you can't stand them, they become a part of you, like an illness you get used to. Well, that could be me one day, you know. You're not an illness. You're an obsession. Archer said he was going to the pictures while his wife went to see her sister. Did you check on that? Of course. She went there, all right. But he didn't go to the cinema? Well, according to his statement, he did. But he found he'd seen the film before, so he strolled round to his shop. He's got a bookshop just off the high street. He had a look at a new window display he's just done, and then he went home. And waited for the wife? Waited. And when she came in, killed her. Accidentally, according to him? Oh, yes. And according to the medical evidence? Yes. But you don't believe it? No. Why not? Too many things wrong. Like what? Well. Here, better read the file. See for yourself. Now, 
Archer's footprints. In the rose bed, just outside the front windows. Perhaps he was pruning his roses. Wrong time of year. From the position and depth of the prints, it looked as if he'd been standing there for some time. An ideal position for anyone who wanted to look in through the front windows. Mm. Why should he want to stand outside his own house and look in? Why don't you get on with your homework? He came up behind her in the dark. Why hadn't she switched the lights on? Fuse blew? Keep reading. The fuse blew earlier, he says, and he put in new fuse work. One fuse blows, two clocks stop. Could they be on the same circuit? No, of course not. The timer's on the cooker power circuit. The other clock's in the living room. But they'd both have stopped if he switched off the current at the main. Which would also explain why his wife was in the dark. Oh, his prints are on the main switch, all right, but then it'd be strange if they weren't. Mm. On that piece of broken vase which she claims fell off the table. Fell off the table. They found particles embedded in the paintwork. No, it was too badly shattered for a simple fall. He smashed it against the banisters, part of the builder. I think so. And the other exhibits? Same thing. Mm. And you found those in the dustbin? At the bottom, loosely wrapped in old newspaper. Mm. Careless. Or confident. Don't suppose it ever occurred to him we'd make a search? No. Forensic have got them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I want to see them as soon as they finish with them. She died of shock. Are you saying that he gave her that shock deliberately to kill her? I'm saying it's possible. Motive? Money. Well, it's all there. Keep your nose down. Your wife was loaded, was she? He was working in the public library when he married her. She was a good bit older than him and everything was hers. The house, the bookshop, cottage in Suffolk, and a tidy bit in cash and securities, about 40 grand. Yes, that's tidy. Also, he has a girlfriend. One girlfriend? Or as and when? As far as I've got, one. Been his assistant in the bookshop for about a year. Kay, uh, Kay Stevens. 25, good-looking, well-educated, living on her wages and no prospects. Vagal inhibition. So Percy Bull's still doctoring on. No, oh, he'll outlive us all. Yeah. Well, I think perhaps a chat with Percy before we go and talk to our chap. Take it with you. Read it in the car. If you weren't ill when you arrived, you would be when you left. <laughs> well, it can't still be open. Ah! Sorry, I'm late. But it's all go. Who's this one? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Percy Bull, this is Alan Ward. So, they still serve you after hours at the Feathers, eh? I have just been on an urgent call to a very poor, very sick old lady. Oh, really? Got something in your eyes, sir? No, no, just wiping away a tear. Oh, very funny. Well, what do you want? Well, something about uh, vagal inhibition and the late Mrs. Archer. Uh, the vagus... The vagus is a tenth cranial nerve. Vagal inhibition is a reflex which paralyzes the medullary centers of the brain, causing immediate unconsciousness and, a second or two later, death. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. What's been in this? Oh, not to worry. The whiskey will sterilize it. I'm right in assuming that it's shock that causes the vagal reflex in the first place. Oh, yes, indeed. Say, that's not bad. I got that from the cut price place around the corner. Yeah, severe shock. Yes. But what may be severe shock to one person could be relatively mild to another. Well, for example. Do you remember the brides in the bath? 1915 was a bit before my time. Well, it was vagal inhibition that killed them. That's why they didn't put up a struggle. All the killer had to do was pull the legs up and under they went, dying from shock within a second or two. If they'd drowned, there would have been post-mortem signs of a struggle, water in the lungs. You're not going to waste all that lovely whiskey, are you? Anything that increases the severity of the shock increases the chance of vagal inhibition. Oh, certainly. And presumably it had happened more easily to someone who was already uh, highly nervous. Yes, indeed. Would you have said that Mrs. Archer was a nervous type? Mm, very much so. I was treating her for mild reactive depression accompanied by an anxiety state. How did you treat her? Librium, the old standby. A tranquilizer. Mm. She was on Librium until she died. Until the day before. She rang up then to say she couldn't find her pills. I said I'd drop some in the next time I was round, but by then she was dead. Would missing them for one day make any difference? No, not really. She'd think it would and get all tensed up about it. 
It was a husband a patient of yours? Yeah. And his fancy bit. I miss Stevens. Mm. He's nice. Well, she's too nice for him. You don't like him? <sighs> He'll be all right. Got a bit of an eye to the main chance, but who hasn't these days? I remember him down at the local library. He's done very nicely for himself. One more thing. Mm -hmm. Could vagal inhibition be induced? What do you mean, deliberately? With malice of forethought. Oh, well, now, that's to say... Well, you couldn't guarantee it. You could have a try, but it'd be a hell of a long shot. And if he failed? Oh, sorry, dear, just a joke. Couldn't lose, could he? Oh, thank you. It's the exhibits from the lab in the path report. Are you suggesting that's what Archer was up to? Not suggesting, Percy, just wondering. Oh, well, could be, it could be. Must be. If it wasn't, it was a hell of a joke to play on a neurotic wife. House in darkness, not a light anywhere, silence. And then the sudden crash as a vase is smashed against the wall. And this. Would that be enough to do it? Well, even if you're right, you'll never prove it. Ah, Superintendent Kingdom. I'm Inspector Ward. The Chief Superintendent will join us in a minute. He's fallen in love with an iceberg. Oh, my white-scented floribunda. He's an enthusiast, is he? Fanatic's the word. Would you care for a drink, Inspector? Oh, I'm sorry, you people don't drink on duty, do you? Certainly not as early in the day as this. Ah, Superintendent Kingdom. Just been admiring your floribunda. You grow roses yourself, do you? Yes. Uh, would you care for a drink, Oh, no, thank you, no. Uh, Mr. Archer, one or two points I'd like to clear up. One or two odd features about your wife's death. Oh, yes. Vagal inhibition. That's very odd. Hmm. You told Inspector Wilson you'd never heard of it. Well, I hadn't until Dr. Bull mentioned it, and then I looked it up. But you didn't look it up until after your wife's death? No. Where did you look it up? In a book on forensic medicine. Oh, uh, that'll be the one you took home from the shop about three weeks ago. I... I don't remember doing that. Miss Stevens does. But you've been to the shop? Yes. Oh, what for? You'd no right to do that. Every right. Why should you object? Well, I don't object you going to the shop, but I do object you trying to involve Kay Stevens. But she is involved, isn't she? No. You planned your little joke together, didn't no, you? No, she knew you nothing about it. You planned it yourself, then? It wasn't. It was all on the spur of the moment. Are you in the habit of playing practical jokes on your wife? No, not in the habit. I used to sometimes when we were first married. But not lately? No. Tell me about your wife, Mr. Archer. How did you get on with her? All right, I suppose. She was a good deal older than me, but we had things in common, books and music and so on. I first met her at one of our library lectures and we started to go to concerts together and... Well, she wanted a husband. And you? I wanted a bookshop, I suppose. Does that sound awful? <laughs> Sounds like a bargain. Yes, well, I tried to keep my side of the bargain, to be a good husband. And I think I was until I met Kay. And then you became a not-so-good husband? Well, it depends what you mean. We still got on all right together. We were still friends. Did your wife know you were in love with another woman? No, I took care to deceive her. I didn't want to hurt her. Did you ever ask her for a divorce? I aired the subject in a general way once or twice, but she had a thing about marriage being forever. According to your statement, you came up behind her in the dark. That's right. In the dark. She was alone. She was coming home to an empty house, she thought. But she didn't put the lights on. Well, well a fuse had blown. Ah, yes, and stopped the clock. Yes. And the timing clock on the cooker. Yes, of course. How? They're on different circuits. Oh, oh no, 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 of course, I'm forgetting. The fuse went much earlier. I put in another one. Then why didn't the lights work? Well, actually, I'd switch them off at the main. You had, had you? All part of the joke. Well, yes. You didn't say anything to Inspector Wilson about that? Well, no. Well, you see, I was so embarrassed about the whole thing. I mean, the idiocy of a grown man playing a stupid joke like that. Yeah, stupid, perhaps. 
certainly very elaborate. I wouldn't say that. Wouldn't you say that was elaborate? Where did you find that? Where you put it. You did, didn't you? You put it in your dustbin? Yes. After you'd finished with it? After you'd used it to kill your wife? No. Then why did you have it? Well, actually, I bought it as a present for a nephew. What um, nephew? My brother George's boy, Tim. Tim Archer. Address? Warple Road. F 14 Warple Road, Finchley. But you never sent it to uh, Warple Road. You put it in your dustbin. Yes, well, I decided that it was too horrific for a young boy. But not for a middle-aged woman. If you mean Pauline, she never saw it. Not even when you put it on? I never did. I mean, you never even tried it on just to see what it looked like? No. Your wife was taking Librium, I believe. Yes. Ten milligrams, three times a day. I don't know. Where did she keep them? In her bedroom. You had separate rooms? Yes. Whereabouts in her bedroom? I don't know. Well, you took them away. No. You took them away and threw them in the dustbin? No. Where they were found last night? Where they at? I don't know anything about them. You took them from your wife's room and threw them away? No, I never touched them. Never? Are you sure? Absolutely certain. Then how did they get into the dustbin? Perhaps Pauline dropped them in her waste paper basket by mistake, or, well, maybe our daily threw them out accidentally. That's Mrs. Simmons of 18 John O'Gaunt Road. Yes. She's made a statement. She says that she knows nothing about them and that they were lost when she wasn't there. Well, I don't know anything about them either. You knew, though, that without them your wife would be even more nervy than usual. Well, I suppose so, but I'd never thought. Then why did you throw away the pills? I didn't. And why did you put on the mask? I didn't. Are you trying to say that I killed her? That's what you said. Well, yes, but accidentally, it's all in my statement. Nothing in your statement about turning the lights off at the main. Well, no, but I've already told you that was part of the joke. Ah, like smashing the vase against the banisters. I didn't. Creeping up behind her in the dark. Wearing a mask. Putting a hand around her throat. Hoping to kill her. No. Intending to kill her. No. Yes. No, it was an accident, I tell you. It was an accident. Mr. Archer, in view of certain discrepancies between what you've just told me and your original statement, I must ask you to come along to the station again. What for? To make another statement, answer some more questions, to tell me the truth. Chief Superintendent Kingdom's office. Are you there? Who is that? Dr. Ball, police surgeon, Halder Street. I've got some news for him. Oh, I think you could find him at your station, Doctor. He's been there most of the day. Yes, well, I haven't got time to go chasing him all around London. Are you one of his officers? Yes. Do you know about this Archer case? A bit. Right, well, now, you tell John Kingdom from me, that girl of Archer's, Case Stevens, she's pregnant. Well, they'll find out, of course. Does it matter? Well, they'll think it does. Well, why? Motive. But you said they believed you. Well, yes, I thought they did, but they came back. I've been at the station most of the day. What for? You've told them everything you know. Well, there was one or two things I forgot to tell them the first time. What sort of things? Oh, like switching the lights off at the main. You did that? Well, only as part of the joke. And forgot about it afterwards? I was confused. I was in a state of shock. What else did you forget? Nothing. Nothing to do with Pauline. Nothing important. Darling, what did they say to you when they came to the shop? Well, they, they just asked questions about you and me and Pauline. Did she know about us? Did I know you'd been planning this joke? But I didn't plan it. Well, you told them that, I hope. Well, how could I? I didn't know. Um, the book, the medical book, how did they get onto that? Well, they asked me if you'd been interested in that sort of thing, and I said I'd remember seeing you take it, that's all. Yes, I, I wish you hadn't mentioned that. Why did you take the book? Oh, I was just reading a book on the Bravo poisoning case. I wanted to check forensic details. Is that the explanation you gave them? Okay, you believe me, don't you? But I want to. Look, I'm innocent. You know I am. At least you should know. Anyway, they can't prove a thing. Motive, opportunity, means. Mm. But can you prove it? I don't have to. Just produce the evidence. Where is it? Well, it's two statements, forensic reports, fingerprints. If you add it all up. If you add it all up, have you got enough for a conviction? No. Have you got enough for a prosecution? Well, the director will decide. Yeah. If he does give us the go-ahead, the defence will take us to the cleaners. Unless we can turn up more evidence. Anything we turn up can only be more evidence that he killed her. He admits that. What we need is evidence of intent. Oh, thank you for pointing it out. I'll try and find it. Right. I'll have a go. 
If you're thinking of the girl. Yeah, I'm not. Well, she's the only person he might have told. I don't think she knew a thing about it. The only person who knows what he intended is out for himself. Well, that's a fair old glimpse of the obvious. Thank you for pointing it out. And the only way of nailing him is to get him to admit it. Well, now you have overdone it. It's worth trying. What do you think we were trying to do all day yesterday? I think he could be pushed a bit harder. No. No pushing. I don't mean clobber him. Leave him alone. If there's enough here for the director, we'll pull him in. Meanwhile, just let him sweat. Let him know we're still working on it. Keep on at friends, relations, neighbours, and especially the girl. Why can't you leave us alone? I've told you everything I know, and so has Bob, haven't you? Over and over again till I'm sick of telling him. I don't like you, and I don't like your manner. Miss Stevens, I'm merely trying to get at the truth. Or get a conviction at any price. All right. Let's start again. Your wife was in a highly nervous state. She'd been deprived of her sedative, which made it worse. You waited here for her in the dark, ready to execute an elaborate plan. No, no. How many times must I tell you it was all on the spur of the moment? There was nothing sinister about it. I'll show you how sinister it was. What do you mean? Show me exactly what you did and how you did it. What's the point of it? I've already told you what I did. Yes, but you left out one or two bits, didn't you? No. All right. You tell me where I go wrong. I'll play your part. And woman detective constable Fry will be the victim. Well, this is disgraceful. You'll simply make it up between you to suit yourselves. To try and prove something that isn't true. Let them play their stupid charade, darling. It doesn't make any difference. No! Look, I don't trust you. I'll take the part of the victim so there'll be a limit to your collusion. Oh, sweetheart, let them get on with it. I don't see why they should have it all their own way. Have you any objection, Inspector? Well, I really think it would be better if Miss Fry did it. Why? Well, I wouldn't want to subject you to anything unpleasant or disagreeable. I am not a child, Inspector. Very well, if you insist. I do. Right, then. Miss Fry, take Miss Stevens outside, tell her exactly what I wanted to do, give us a minute and then send her in. Switch off the mail. Now then, let's simulate conditions. Now, Mr. Archer, if you stand over there so that you can see as much as possible. That's it. We can imagine that we're waiting for the victim, Pauline Archer, to return home. But to what she expects is an empty house. Now the door is opening. Our victim. She switches on the light, and it doesn't work. That doesn't work either. Now she gets a little frightened. Perhaps she hears a sound, or imagines that she does. I told you to leave him alone. But I've got an admission. A ledge. A confession. He's caught the lot. Did he write it? No. Did he sign it? No, but I've got two other police witnesses beside myself and we all made our notes immediately after the interrogation. Oh, I'm sure you did. You haven't answered my original question. Why did you go back there against my specific instructions? I don't remember any specific instructions. Oh, don't quibble. I'm not the one who's quibbling. All I did was to arrest a murderer. That's for the jury to say. He's confessed. Yeah. And how did you manage to get this confession? 
I put a bit of pressure on him. What sort of pressure? Well, I didn't put a hood over his head or stand him spread-eagled against a wall, if that's no. what you mean. You staged a grotesque pantomime. You've heard about that. You think I wouldn't? Not from you. There was nothing out of line. It was a simple reconstruction. I warned him what I was going to do. What about the girl, Kay Stevens? Did you warn her what you were going to do to well, her? she complained? Not yet. Well, she'd better not, because I didn't ask her to cooperate. She insisted. And you always do what the witnesses tell you. In this case, I thought it would be more effective if we used her rather than Judith Fry. Effective? You could have killed her. I don't believe it. Nor do you. You frightened her silly. She passed out. And she's pregnant. I didn't know that at the time. If she'd lost the child, how effective would that have been for you? If she died, if she'd miscarried, if Arthur had gone on denying it. But none of it happened. Nobody's hurt. I went out to get the truth and I got it. The truth? Or a conviction? Both. Well, all right, we already knew the truth, but this way we get our conviction too. Not our conviction. And the Crown only gets it if this stands up. Well, why shouldn't it? It was voluntary. No duress, no threats, no promises. That's what you say. We haven't heard yet what Archer has to say. Or what the defence will make of this when it comes to court. If this confession is thrown out, the whole case could be thrown out. Then I'll be for it. You're for it anyway. If Archer is acquitted, he can't be tried again on this charge, no matter how much new evidence we find against him. And you know that! Is that all? Isn't it enough? Well, Kingdom, we meet again. Mr. Cleveland, I don't think you know Inspector Ward. Ah, so you're the fellow, are you? Fellow, sir. The statement by the accused. Took you on that. Why? Well, there's been some suggestion from the defence that it was elicited by improper methods. You mean duress? That's what they mean, that worries me. I can assure you, sir, that there was nothing that I... that any reasonable man would call duress. Well, I wouldn't have expected it in a case where John Kingdom was investigating, officer. I take it Mr. Ward was acting under your instructions? As you say, I was the investigating officer. And did you approve the manner in which the confession was gained? Yes. All right, he's your man. So leave me to ask, really. Well, we might get away with it. Oh, Reggie. Reggie Davidge for the defence. Excuse me. How are you? Quietly confident. I must say I'm rather surprised your people are going ahead with this one. Why? What do you got without that confession? Ah, so you are going to object? Naturally, after my man's very strong complaint about duress, as I more or less told you. Well, if you're right, and the evidence is inadmissible, and we haven't got a case without it, why didn't you get the whole thing thrown out in the law court? Not about Jenkins, oh no. He'd never take the responsibility of deciding a point in law, so we'd have ended up here anyway. And by then, my dear chap, I'd have had to disclose me hand. So you would. Well, if you are going to make a submission, then I'll merely take formal evidence from the inspector. Much obliged. Inspector, did you visit the accused at his home on the afternoon of October the 26th? I did. Were you accompanied by anyone? By a woman, Detective Constable Fry and Police Constable Phillips. Did the accused make a statement to you? He did. He said... Stop there, officer. My lord, I understand my learned friend wishes to make a submission to you on the admissibility of the evidence to follow. And I would support the view that it should be heard in the absence of the jury. May I remind you, officer, you are still under oath. I was aware of that, sir. Are you also aware that the alleged statement was made under the most improper, indeed deplorable, conditions? No, sir. You decided to reconstruct the alleged crime, did you not? I took the defendant through the events of that night, yes. Did you switch off all the lights and create an atmosphere of gloom and eeriness? Darkness was essential to the crime. The victim was killed in the dark. Crime? It is not for you, officer, to decide whether a crime has been committed. Alleged crime. Now tell the court exactly what you did in the course of this so-called reconstruction. So, you smashed a vase against the wall, you crept up behind her, you put your hands round her throat, and you were wearing that horrific mask. Yes. 
and Miss Stevens, who'd never seen the mask before, fainted. Is that correct? Yes. But she asked to take part in the reconstruction, and she's never complained. Uh, don't make speeches, officer. Confine yourself to answering the question. You wore that mask, and then Miss Stevens fainted. And can you wonder? Now, what was the point of this indecent charade? Was it to frighten the defendant? No. To shock him? No. To put him at his ease, then? No, it was... Yes, Inspector? Well, to shake him a bit. Ah, at last, to shake him a bit. I wonder what you'd have done to shake him a lot. Thank you, Inspector. <clears throat> I've not finished with you, Inspector. I was thanking you for answering my question. This so-called confession was, in fact, the written-up report of an interrogation a record of admissions which the defendant made because he was so terrified that he would rather have admitted anything than continue his ordeal by inquisition. Is that not right, officer? No, sir, he wasn't terrified. At least he didn't seem so to me. So you regarded his confession as genuine? Absolutely. Then why, when he had recovered, didn't he make a statement of his own volition and sign it? Perhaps he thought better of it. Did he not, in fact, immediately and strenuously deny his guilt? and all the admissions which you had literally terrified him into making. I can only repeat, sir, he did not seem terrified to me. Inspector, was he not so distracted that at one point he thought Miss Stevens had been killed? Did he not say, in fact, you've killed her? Yes. He then admitted that he'd murdered his wife. No, officer. He admitted that he'd killed her. But he'd always admitted that. It was you who put the word murder into his mouth. Wasn't it? I asked him if he'd murdered his wife, and he said yes. He said yes. As he would have said to any question you put to him in those circumstances. Thank you, officer. That's all. And finally, my lord, if I may refer you to Archbold. Paragraph 1105. I'll read the relevant passage. In order to be admissible, a confession must be free and voluntary. And unless it be shown affirmatively on the part of the prosecution that it was made without the prisoners being induced to make it, by any promise of favour, or by menaces, or by undue terror, it shall not be received in evidence against him. My Lord, I submit that the whole point of this barbarous procedure was to terrorise the prisoner into admitting anything that could be construed as an admission of guilt. This alleged statement is not only worthless, my lord, it is disgraceful and totally inadmissible under the rules of evidence laid down under judges' rules. Mr. Clevedon. Having listened carefully to the arguments of learned counsel, I have no hesitation in ruling that this so-called confession is inadmissible. Inspector Ward's methods were far more than improper. They were totalitarian in their cynical disregard of the rights of the individual. I will pass no further comment on his actions. No doubt his superiors <coughs> will. <coughs> Recall the jury. Usher, please show Exhibit D to the witness. Do you recognize that? Yes, it's part of the broken vase which was found on the floor in the hall. Were all the pieces on the floor? No. There were some scratches in the paintwork, and small fragments of the vase were lodged in some of those scratches. Did the accused offer any explanation as to how the vase came to be broken? He said his wife knocked it off the table as she fell. Then how did the fragments get onto the wall? I don't know. Nor do I. Exhibit F, please. You hold it up so that the jury can see it. Now, as we have already heard from the evidence of Constables Jacobs and Irwin, this mask was found in the prisoner's dustbin. What did the prisoner have to say about it? He said that he'd bought it for a nephew, but decided it was too horrific to send, so he'd thrown it away. Did you question him further? Yes. I asked him if he'd ever worn it, and he said no. 
I then asked him if he was quite sure that he'd never even tried it on just to see what it looked like, and he replied that he was quite sure. Why did you press him on this point? Because traces of hair, similar in all respects to his own, were found adhering to the mask on the inside here. As we have already heard from expert evidence. So, despite his denial, the accused must have worn the mask at some time. Yes. Now would you look at Exhibit G, please? What is it? It's a bottle of pills prescribed for Mrs. Archer, which she lost on the day before she was killed. My Lord, I must protest against the assumption made by the witness in that answer. I don't see why, Mr. Damage. I understood it was common ground that Mrs. Archer was killed. What we are here to determine is whether it was by accident or design. As your Lordship pleases. I shall be calling medical evidence, my Lord, on the significance of the lost pills. And as we have already heard, the pills also were found in the dustbin. What did the accused have to say to you about these pills? He said he had no idea how they'd got into the dustbin. His wife kept them in her bedroom. He didn't know where, and that he'd never touched them. Never touched the bottle? So he said. Why did you press him on this point? Because I knew that his fingerprints had been found on the bottle. Remarkable. When did you put your questions to Mr. Archer? His second statement. The only statement which he made to you. Was it on the day after his wife's death? Yes. And is it not the case that he was still in a state of considerable shock, very upset and confused? I don't think so. You don't think so? I'm not asking for speculation, Chief Superintendent. In that case, I don't know. Didn't you observe his manner? Yes. And was it not that of a man who was upset and confused? No. You cannot have observed him very closely, I can assure you he was. And very naturally so. Let us consider the questions of the mask and the pill bottle. Granting that he may have touched the pill bottle on one occasion, a long time before his wife's death, and granting that he may have tried on the mask for a moment before deciding it was unsuitable for his nephew, is it not perfectly natural that in his state of distress and confusion, he should forget two such trivial incidents until reminded of them. Answer the question, please. I'm sorry, I didn't know you'd finished. Don't be impertinent, Mr. Kingdom. Confine yourself to answering the questions. Is it not natural that in all these circumstances he should forget two such trivial incidents? Are you asking me to speculate? My Lord, I must appeal to you to protect me from the insolence of this witness. I hardly think you need protection from a witness, Mr. Davidge. But since you've appealed to me, I must say I think you asked for it. My Lord, I must... All right, Mr. Davidge, don't let's make a meal of it. As your Lordship pleases. I do, please, and now let's get on. I think you've made your point about the prisoner's possible forgetfulness. As far as this witness is concerned, my Lord, but I shall return to it with other witnesses. And now let us turn to the book on forensic medicine which the accused took home with him from the shop. Did he tell you he was taking it? No. And how did you know? I saw him take it and asked him what it was. Did you ask him why he wanted it? Yes. He said there was no special reason. He just liked it. Liked the subject? No, the book. He said he liked the look of it. Nothing about wanting to look up the forensic details of a Victorian murder case? Not then, no. What do you mean? He only said that afterwards, when the police asked him about the book. My Lord, I must object to the introduction of hearsay evidence. And after his wife's convenient death, when Mr. Archer was free, did you still plan to marry him? Immediately afterwards, yes. Not now. Despite the baby, you would not now agree to marry him? No, I wouldn't. Why not? I couldn't. I couldn't bear to. Not after what he did. My Lord, I must object in the strongest possible terms to this line of question. Neither the witness's current matrimonial plans nor her current opinion of the accused are in any way relevant to the case. Mr. Cleveland, I'm inclined to agree, unless you can offer some justification. I don't think I can, my Lord. No further questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Ball. Uh, no re-examination, my Lord. That is the case for the prosecution, my lord.
And my Lord, I wish to make a submission. Yes, I rather thought you might. Very well, Mr. Davidge, what is it? The old fool throws the case out now, and justice will be seen to be done. Justice? My Lord, my submission is that no man's liberty should be put in jeopardy on evidence so flimsy and a case so insubstantial as that presented by the Crown. A few, a very few pieces of circumstantial evidence, all of which are capable of perfectly innocent explanation. I therefore ask your Lordship to direct the jury that the accused has no case to answer. Thank you, Mr. Davidge. Whilst I must say that I would have made the same submission had I been in your shoes, or should I say in your wig. Nevertheless, I cannot accept it. Not such an old fool as he looks. As long, as long as the jury can see through those innocent explanations. This is a strange case. Perhaps a unique case. If all the evidence upon which the Crown places a guilty interpretation is equally capable of an innocent interpretation, then I believe it is not only in the interests of justice, but indeed of the prisoner himself, that the jury should decide the issue after hearing all the evidence from both sides. Please open your defence, Mr. Davidge. Members of the jury, do you find the prisoner at the bar guilty or not guilty of murder? Not guilty. My God, the bastard's got away with it. Wait for it. And that is the verdict of you all? Yes, not guilty of murder, but guilty of manslaughter. Members of the jury, I entirely agree with your verdict. You have, in my opinion, rightly concluded that the case was not proved beyond all reasonable doubt. But there is no doubt that Mrs. Archer's death was caused by the reckless performance of a perhaps lawful act, but with a high degree of criminal negligence. Call the investigating officer. Is that what you call justice? What do you call it? He got away with murder. He's laughing at us. I shouldn't think he's laughing. He got a five-year sentence. When he comes out, there'll be nothing. No house, no shop, no money, no girl, no child. What more do you want? <laughs> 